you hear any of these rumors about Y2K? Uh, no, what is that? Well, it's, um, this mass hysteria going around that every computer and electronic device in this world is just going to spontaneously stop working at midnight on New Year's Eve of this year. Because there's rumors that the clocks on the computers and devices aren't programmed to go over to the year 2000. So if I come into work on New Year's Day and find out this hunk of junk isn't working, I think I'm going to have to bring out the Morse code machine. Oh. Uh. And good morning to you too, sleepyhead. Hey, check this out. I saved that hiker that I talked to you about last night. What do you think about that, huh? Stars in the lake. Oh no! Oh my god, he's not breathing. Hey you! Grab the radio and turn it to channel one. Tell them I need emergency services on the double. Pine County Services, what do you need? Uh, hello? Uh, I need emergency services right now. Let me transfer your call real quick. Pine County Dispatch, what do you need? This is Tower 4 at Gracewind Park. I have an unconscious park ranger who is not responding. Our tower is just half a mile from the visitor center up the trail. I need paramedics, stat. Pine County Police Department, what do you need? Uh, hello? Um, you might not remember me, but, um, remember that hiker that you saved a couple years back? Oh yeah, I remember. How are you doing? What, what's the problem? The night you saved me, you had a second park ranger on duty. And him and I have become, uh, you know, really great friends since then, but, um, he just went missing this morning. Wait, what? Well, do you know where he might have gone? I don't know where he might have gone, but he was at his grandparents' cabin this weekend over by Gracewind Park. I I think he might be lost in there somewhere. I, I don't want to go back in there. So, that's why I called you. Do you think you can go in there and search for him? Alright, listen to me. You don't have to worry about a thing. You know what? This afternoon... I'll head up to the park myself and conduct my own search party to try and find him. Is that a deal? Alright, well, see ya, and thank you for calling. This is Johnny Elk bringing you calls of alleged ghost stories from the infamous Gracewind Park. Now this morning, I'm joined by Edmund Gray, yep, who claims he has his own strange experiences at the park. Eddie, how are you doing today? Hey, Johnny. Um, I have a story that I think you all should hear. And this is about an urban legend that I think you all know about. This isn't about those constellations and the like again, is it? Well, it goes something like this. I was out camping with 
two college friends, you know, because why not? And we decided to camp out by the lake because we knew a couple good camping spots by it. And also, the lake's beautiful. The night sky was clear and glittered with stars. You know, the park is always known for having great views. We were just sitting out by our campfire, grilling hot dogs, and that's when my friend notices something in the lake. It, at first, looks like a normal reflection, but there was just something about it that really stood out to us. There were bright stars in the part of reflection towards the shore that we were on. <laughs> okay, man. I think we've heard enough today. Okay, Mac, next caller, please. That's when they started to move. Like fireflies ascending slowly from the forest floor. They started scurrying toward the shoreline. It was then that the water began to ripple, and we realized that they weren't stars in the water, but they were eyes. Uh, stop it! We started to frantically pack our things to get the hell out of there, but the eyes, followed by a head, slowly rose out of the water. It started to lurk toward our camping site, and as soon as we made the slightest effort to run, it lunged at my friend. I'm begging he you! He seemed to have been slashed by something sharp because he went down almost immediately. The figure turned my way, and as soon as I met eye contact with it, I was dazed. Its eyes were so mesmerizing it seemed to put me in a trance. I must have stood there for minutes until it was suddenly gone, but saw that everyone around me was dead. I looked down at my hands to see that I no longer had hands, but long... I said stop! Hello? I have my own ghost story about Grace Wynn Park. So sorry. But I think we're gonna cut this broadcast short today. So, what's the prognosis, Doc? We figured that he must have just suffered from an aneurysm. We ran a CT scan and an MIR on him, but we can't find anything wrong. He seems completely normal. How could that be? He doesn't have any medical issues. Uh, well, I'm gonna go talk to him. Maybe he remembers what happened. Well, go ahead. Take your time. Hey, is he going to be alright, ma'am? When will he be able to go home? Well, we need to run a couple more tests first, but we should be able to discharge him in the morning. Well, that's good. <sighs> Something's wrong. What happened? Uh, I don't know, he seemed alright for a second, and next thing you know, his heart rate starts crashing. Clear the room! I need a medical team here ASAP! All right, deputy. Talk to me. Well, we heard about the call you got about your missing friend. We located the address for the cabin, but it isn't next to the park. It's in the park. Come on, we gotta, we gotta move. No, I'm not going in there. Don't get cold feet on me now, deputy. You need to stop fearing this place. It's all a superstition. Don't end up acting like the others in this decrepit old town. Now come on. Look, I know you're worried about it. The day he changed, all you cared about was his mental well-being. But you can't drag me into this. Remember, my brother went missing in there, and I don't want the same thing to happen to me. That was 14 years ago, Mike. Now you gotta suck it up. Or just stay out here. Wait a few minutes. Maybe run back to town, telling everyone that poor Tom went missing out in Gracewind Park. I'm sorry, dude, but you're on your own now. Good luck.
Hmm. Abnormal thing for him to do. Leave the phone unhooked. But there's no sign of a break-in. He must still be here. What? <gasps> the hell is that? Where in God's name did that come from? What the? Strong breeze, I guess. Hey! Are you down there? Yes. Yes, I am. Don't worry. I'll find a key or something. How'd you get trapped down there anyway? Uh, just fixing a broken light bulb down here. Long story. Uh, I feel you. Alright, I'll be right back. I need to find a key. What was he thinking? What was he thinking? Giving me that call? Probably only been in that basement for a couple hours. Probably drove up to the cabin and saw that he wasn't in there. And then just fleed. Ran away. <laughs> uh, unironically funny. Especially in these woods. I mean, I don't know. I think my old hiker friend is ending up like all the other superstitious folks in this town. <laughs> <sighs> Is he? Hey, pal! I got that key to the cellar door. I can open it for you, but first, I need you to tell me a couple things. First of all, how on earth did an 80 pound bed frame? Get on top of your cellar door when you're already down there. Oh, uh, well, you see, there was a massive earthquake this morning in Gracewind Park, and, um, I think the bed must have just slid on top of the door. Uh-huh. Well, I didn't feel a single tremor this morning in Pine County. So, I don't know what you're on about. Well, you know Gracewind Park's located much closer to the fault line, and you had to drive ten minutes to get here, right? Okay, you got me there. But, why was your phone unhooked in the living room? Uh, that must have also been an earthquake. I have a very old phone, you know. Okay. Also, did you have, like, candles shoved up your chimney or something? Because when I was walking around, something, like, fell from it and started melting. I was cleaning out the chimney the other day and I needed some form of light to see down it. You needed a candlestick to see inside your chimney? Yeah, I ran out of batteries in my flashlight. Well, your candlestick looked awfully shaped like a wax figurine. Alright, alright, fine. Enough with these questions. I'll... I'm gonna open the door. And I need you to stay at the bottom of the cellar. Okay? Tom, what are you going with this? Why, why are you asking all these questions? Are you scared? Like, is there something going on? Do you not trust me or something? No, 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 Tyler, I do trust you, it's just... I just want to see if you're alright, you know? So, I need you to stay back in the cellar. As you wish, Tom. Yeah! You're pretty insane if you were thinking about mind-gaming a cop. Now walk out of the cellar slowly with your hands behind your head. Whoa! 
health. There's no way. He's not real. No, no, no. I've only seen him in my dreams. That was, that was two years ago. No, he's not here. Oh. I gotta call this in. All units, we have a 1091 at Gracewind Park. I'll repeat, we have a 1091 at Gracewind Park. Hey, I remember you. From the premonitions I had two years ago. Now what did you do to him? Don't look at me like that. I know you can speak. You mimicked my friend to lure me in. I knew it. Now you tell me. Why have you been terrorizing this godforsaken park? Why him? You really want to know a human? Well, I had a confrontation with him a few years back. He's been mocked ever since. Hey there, buddy. How have you been doing? Feeling better? Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. Thank you. Look, I know you're exhausted right now and you're still trying to clear up your head with things, but we need to have a talk. So, yesterday, you woke up and you started mumbling about a couple things. Something about stars in the lake. Can you recall what that means? Ooh. Tom, listen to me. Three days ago, I came across something I wish I never have. I took a stroll one day down to Gracewind Lake to clear my head because I like the park. It's one of the most beautiful parks on the west coast. It was a full moon that night. And the lake was beautifully reflecting the stars above. And that's when I noticed a pair, oddly placed in the water. They looked like eyes. I thought it was just a coincidence considering the constellations, but... They started moving. They moved to the shore. They they started coming out of the water. There, something was coming out of the water. Something was... It knew I was there. It knew I was there. Something's wrong. It was you. Oh my god, it was you. He saw in the lake that night. Yes. Yes, it was. He's dead, isn't he? You killed him! You monster! It was only a matter of time before I needed to quench my thirst. And how dare you call me a monster! I forgot this anything. 
could take care of the last person in my territory, including you. Whoa! A watchtower. I need to get to a watchtower. Tom, what are you doing here? I don't have time to explain. Does that radio work? Well, yeah, it works. It's my job to monitor it. Tom, what's going on? Why are you here? Okay, listen. I don't know how to tell you this, Drew, but I'm being hunted right now. By who? I think the more appropriate question is, by what? What was that? The thing that wants me dead. Oh, great. He's going to burn the tower to the ground. Wait, what? Who's burning the tower down? The, the goat man! I'm sorry, did you say the goat man? Tom, that's an urban legend. That's what I thought until I learned he killed my former partner. Now help me get the radio set up. You want to do the honors? Yes, I will. Pinewood Dispatch, this is Fire Tower 2 at Gracewind Park. A wild animal has intentionally set the tower ablaze and it is starting to burn. This is Pinewood Dispatch. Who am I speaking with? This is Officer Tom of the 1st Precinct. Whoa! Our tower is starting to collapse. Don't worry, Officer. We're sending an aerial support to get you out of there. You know what I've just realized, Drew? I don't know how I've glossed over this, and I think I know why it's come to mind now, but it's never occurred to me that I've been trying for four years to prove that this monster's real. And now I have the most undeniable evidence of it. My cruiser back at the entrance of the park has scratches on it, tires slashed, the front hood dented. Not to mention there's probably a body back at Tyler's cabin. What I'm really trying to say, Drew, is if we make it out of this mess, we might be able to save hundreds of lives. Because once the public finds out that this monster is real, this park will be shut down. Nobody will ever come here again. And this monster can keep his territory. But first, we have to get out of here. I think our fate might be sealed. I wouldn't say that just yet. Dispatch, we've located the watchtower. The fire seems to be ascending the stairway. And the structure does not look sound. Roger that. Go with the airlift operation. Okay, gently hover this over the balcony of the tower. Then I'll drop the safety harness. Alright, let's go. You're getting off first, Drew. Why? Why? Because I'm an officer of the law, and you're still a civilian after all. This 
dispatch, we have rescued the park ranger, but that officer might be a problem for us. That tower looks like it's going to fall any minute now. Rescue that officer, but be careful. Huh? Oh, great. Yeah! What is he doing? Jump! We don't have much time! What? No! Dispatch, the tower shifted. The officer fell. Damn. <sighs> Go ahead. Kill me. I'd rather see it. And watch you suffer. Now why would that make a difference? All you want to do is kill. Why play with your food when you can just eat it? I have never understood your human phrases, let alone how to mimic your kind. Now why don't you use that mouth to choke out your rage? Don't you remember that I murdered your friend? You know what? You're right. You did kill him. And you know what that makes you? It makes you a shameful, ugly, horny, cold, heartless monster. Yes, I used the word horny. Kind of a weird word, but that describes you perfectly. But I have to say, your execution was pretty impressive. How'd you do it anyway? Did you run up to the door and use me or my hiker's friend's voice to lure him out? I might have. I might have not. You know, you're smarter than I thought for being just a massive goat. And you probably know more about this park than I do. But there's one thing that I know that you probably don't. And what could that be, you low light blue shirted being? Gracewind Architecture. Yeah! Our top story tonight on Portland News Network. Pinewood County civilians feel relief for the first time in 50 years as one young officer bravely kills one infamous monster that haunts Gracewind Park, the legendary Goatman. Long believed to be an urban legend, we now have proof that this monster does exist as a head and body has been retrieved from a burnt down watchtower earlier tonight. We also have news that a related murder has also occurred at the park earlier today. More about that later. Hey, you're Officer Tom, right? Yeah, that's me. Well, we did an investigation of your friend's cabin, and we have found a body in the cellar. It had several scratch wounds on it, but it seems the identity of the body does in fact belong to one Tyler Leeds, your former partner. Well, I figured. He's always been such a paranoid guy, ever since his incident. We just kept telling him, it's all in your head, you're just a bit sick. But today I found out it wasn't an illness that was haunting him. It was just a grudge. Well, officer, I'm very so sorry about your friend. In the meantime, you will be transported to the hospital while we close this case. What are you guys calling this case, anyway? 
We're filing this case under the Leeds murder. Sounds fine by me.